Hey guys, it's me, Saren, back with another video. We all know what this video is going to be about. Um, so as you guys know, this whole this whole election cycle, I have not made any videos about the election. The election cycle has been was like a full 18 months. I have not made a single video about it. A lot of you guys have asked me, like, what do I think about this election cycle and what do I think about voting and all that stuff and politics and all that stuff. Um, I'm from Washington, D.C. I was born and raised in D.C. I grew up really, really immersed in politics. Um, but I am not political. Which whenever I say that, people always say, like, what do you mean you're not political? Like, you talk about race and, and social justice and activism and sexism and all these things. I'm not political in the sense that I am not invested in a two-party system, which is why I have not made in 18 months a single video about this election cycle. Um, and I barely even, like, tweet about it, and I don't post about it on Instagram, and, like, I just don't. Like, I, I liked Bernie. I liked Bernie. I was a Bernie supporter. So when Bernie, you know, didn't happen, what little interest I had kind of fizzled out, and I kind of, you know, I was just like, well, this shit sucks. Um, so, yeah, I'm not invested in a two-party political system. I'm not invested in a, in a bipartisan, you know, system that, is a fucking circus. Like, this entire election cycle was a fucking circus. Both candidates sucked, you know, the candidates that they, that they kind of decided were going to be, like, the fit. Like, we, we have, like, a two-party system that's really not even a two-party system. Like, because when you, when you went to go vote, because I did vote, when you went to go vote, there's like five names on the ballot, like Jill Stein was on there, who I actually really like with the Green Party. She said some questionable things about vaccinations that I haven't really cared for, but um, like Jill Stein was on there and someone from like the Peace and Freedom Party. Like when you went, there were like five options. It wasn't just like Hillary or like Trump. There was like five options on there. So like, but we live in this like society that has like, you know, kind of invented, created this, like, two-party system, this bipartisan system. So, like, and it's, like, ran by the media. And so, like, the media decides, like, only, like, you know, we're going we're gonna, to, like, boost up these, like, two, you know, we're going to, like, the media picks in a weird way. Like, the media picks. Like, Bernie, for example, Bernie had, like, a lot of support kind of, like, on the internet and, like, with the grassroots organizations and with, like, millennials and, like, young people. But, like, the media, like, the mainstream media decided, like, that, like, Bernie was, like, not, oh, Bernie's just, like, some old guy. He's just, like, some old third-party candidate. And, and so they, like, didn't really give him a lot of, like, coverage. And then you kind of saw the reverse. You had, like, the media kind of, like, fell in love with Donald Trump as this, like, charismatic, just, like completely off the wall character and they gave him this like 24 7 news coverage which really like elevated him into being like a possible contender and like now he's going to be like the president like so it's like 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 I said like I'm just not invested in this like weird two-party system that's not even like really a two-party system and it's ran by the media and it's just like everything is this fucking circus and even like the candidates that they decided to like go with like Hillary and like Trump like I said like they both suck like Hillary is a fucking corporate capitalist um to the max and she also is a former Goldwater girl like she's a racist like, she coined the term super predator, and her and her husband were, like, instrumental in, like, bringing, you know, they signed that crime bill into effect, and they, like, ushered in the era of mass incarceration that, like, decimated black and brown communities. So, like, people didn't want her. Like, people didn't fucking want her. And then you have, like, Trump, who's also a fucking corporate capitalist, racist, fascist, demagogue. Like, and people didn't want him. But we have this like bipartisan system in place, so it's like one or the other. It's like we pick these candidates, so like you guys have to like choose between them, like two evils. Like which evil do you want? You know, like which one can you decide? It's like the lesser of two evils. Like, and I just feel like a two-party system like really isn't fair. And then again, like I said, especially when you can go vote, and then there's like five options, not even just like two. 
And people are like, oh, who are these other names? Why have I not read anything about these names? Why have I not, like, seen anything on TV about these names? Like, who are these people? Like, why did it, Why is it decided that the debates are going to have, like, only two, you know, only, like, two candidates? Why is it decided that, like, the major, you know, if these are going to be our major political parties, like, it's been decided that the major political parties can only fucking nominate, like, one candidate. Like, they can nominate, like, Hillary and Bernie. You know, like, there's just, like, I just feel like our whole political system is just, like, a fucking sham. So I'm just, like, not invested in it at all. <laughs> Which is why, like I said, I haven't made a video about it. I haven't, like, talked about it. I haven't, like, engaged. I've been, like, completely checked out this entire political cycle. And I see a lot of people that are, like, blaming and, like, talking bad about people that have been, like, checked out. And like, oh, like the people that didn't vote and like the third party voters, like, oh, like you, you know, you split the votes and you like split the party and like it's your fault. Like, number one, there have always been third party voters. Number one, there have always been people that didn't vote, like, like, because there's a disconnect between politicians and like the average American and the average voter. Like, that's not anything new and you can't blame those people. <laughs> like the people that you can blame are fucking white people, plain and simple. Y'all thought that white people were better than they actually are. I've been telling y'all for years, yes, all white people, all white people are racist. And I tweeted this, I was like, all white people are racist. Because, you know, like, like I said in my video, we live in a racist white supremacist society that teaches teaches white people to be racist from the minute they're born. And then you have the white people that realize it and they snap out of it, which I talked about in that video as well. I like to call them like recovering racists. But like the number of white people that are not racist is so small. And this is what I put on Twitter. I said like the number of white people that aren't racist is so small as to not even matter, which is what we literally just saw unfold before our very eyes in this fucking election. So hopefully this is a wake up call. <laughs> For all of you fucking coons out there talking about some not all white people are racist and for all of y'all that like run up in my comments talking about some calling white people racist is racist because you're like generalizing them like let this be a fucking wake up call to you niggas. White people are fucking racist. They don't fucking like you. I don't care. Like, comment, talk about some extend a hand in love to white people and like all this bullshit. Like, no, like they, they just showed you. They just fucking showed you. They don't like you. They're racist. Period. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear anything else. That is why Donald Trump won. Because white people went out and fucking voted for him. Period. Like, that's it. Like... It's not the, part of the, the, the it's not the fault of the third party voters. It's not the fault of the no party voters. It's not the fault of the eleven thousand people that wrote in Harambe to be fucking stupid. It's not the the fault of the fucking five percenters that were trying to like you know are we gonna like get Jill Stein just to five percent because even if you can like get your third party voter your third party candidate to five percent like that's still millions of people right like that's still millions of people that like voted for your third party and even that is like proof that like our two-party system does not work like having just two parties and like two main candidates doesn't work like people are not fucking happy or satisfied with the way that our country is being run or the way that you know our political system is is working and white people especially went out and voted for Donald Trump because this is the backlash to having a black president. This, As soon as Barack Obama got elected the first time eight years ago, white people started to react. And then when he beat Mitt Romney again four years ago and white folks were sure that Mitt Romney was going to win, they reacted even more. And they have been reacting and bugging the fuck out ever since. All this shit that you see with the Black Lives Matter and like the white people, white people have been really losing their collective minds for a long time and showing you how they really fucking feel about you. So hopefully a lot of y'all gonna fucking wake up and fucking smell the coffee and finally believe it. These white people don't fucking like you. Your neighbors don't like you. Your boss doesn't like you. Your coworkers don't like you. Okay? The parents of the fucking kid, the kids that your black ass kids go to school with, they don't fucking like you either. Okay, the white liberals don't like you. The white moderates don't like you. The conservatives don't like you. The out and out racists don't like you. Fucking the vast majority of white people voted for Donald Trump. Now, Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote. She did win the popular vote. She also won the vote among people of color. Right. We went out and voted. Even though the vast majority of us don't even fucking like her. 
because she usher, helped usher in the fucking era of mass incarceration and super predators. But Donald Trump won the white vote and they fucking voted for Donald Trump because they're racist. Yes, all white people. Like I said, yes, all white people. And the number of them that are not racist is so small as to not even matter. Like those of y'all that are white and watch these videos and are not fucking racist and are recovering racist, it's like a handful. Of, it's like a literal handful, like five of y'all. Like it's like a like it's like a drop. It's like one drop in a bucket versus the amount of white people that are fucking racist. Like, and I really hope that this election has, like, opened some of y'all eyes. And I see people that are like, oh, my God. And I see people on Twitter and stuff that are like, wow, I, like, really underestimated how much, like, white people hate us. And, like, how strong, like, the backlash and the reaction is to, like, Black Lives Matter and, like, black people, like, gaining some autonomy and, like, having a voice and, like, having a black president. Like, wow, like, I really underestimated, like, the white backlash. And I'm just sitting there, like, I fucking told you two years ago that white people are racist and they don't fucking like you like and I like I said I really hope this is like cleared the cobwebs out of some of y'all's fucking brains because this is how they really feel this is how they are this is how they fucking feel all of them like I don't care that's the truth and we were talking on Twitter about like what is the cause of like all pain and suffering in the world and shit and I was like the cause of pain and suffering in the world can all go back to like the same few things. I was like racism, you know, the concept of white supremacy. That's one. White people, white people, like white people, white supremacy, the concept of white supremacy, racism. That's one. That's a big one. I was like sexism and like the patriarchy. That's two. And then I said capitalism, the free market classism that's three and somebody was like the big three that's like the big three of like evil <laughs> and like you know social and political unrest is because of one of those three things and in this election you pretty much saw all three of those things play out like the white supremacy the racism the white people that feel like you know we have this black president and this like black lives matter shit and these, like, black people, like, won't stop fucking shutting up about all this shit. And they're rioting and they're protesting in the streets. And we need to, like, take our country back and, like, white power and, like, all that stuff. That is very real. That's very real. That's how these people really fucking feel, right? And then you had the sexism and the patriarchy. And you had the people that maybe really didn't even fucking care one way or another. But they don't want a woman president. So they said, I'm not voting for her, right? That's two. And then in terms of the capitalism and the classism and the free market, you have huge swaths of the American population that feel really disconnected from Republicans as well as fucking Democrats. And when you went to go vote, by the way, it didn't just say Republican for Donald Trump. It said Republican slash American independent, just so y'all know. You have huge swaths of the population, especially in, you know, in middle America, in, you know, these rural fucking farming towns and in Pennsylvania and fucking Iowa and Idaho and Wisconsin and Oklahoma, you know, that that feel this disconnect from both major parties, Republicans as well as Democrats, because the, pu the, the parties are ran by the establishment. They're ran by these people that are really educated and, and, you know, people that feel like they're up here. And then you have, you know, people that are living in the Rust Belt and the Dust Belt that are like down here and they feel like nobody's, you know, speaking for them and talking with them and representing them. No one's looking out for them in terms of their economy, you know, and, th and there's something to be said for like the, magically you know disappearing middle class and and the tumbling of so many americans into poverty and like here comes donald trump who's really not pledging his allegiance not really to republicans or democrats you know who's very much you know oh, I'm, I'm just like you you know and somebody said on twitter you know that's that's the greatest political scam in history that he convinced all these you know poor rural white people he's a fucking millionaire like he convinced them and he came from a family of millionaires his father was a millionaire you know but he convinced them that you know i'm like you i'm just a regular person like you i'm trying to you know dismantle the establishment I'm not a highfalutin, you know, Democrat or Republican that went to a fancy school and uses a bunch of fancy words. And, you know, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm representing for the little guy, basically. And those people went out and voted and they voted for him. And I feel like the Democrats are fucking highfalutin, you know, and and they and they're you know, like I said, they're educated and they and they have a superiority complex over the Republicans. It's very true. And they underestimate they they underestimated, you know, 
how tired people are of capitalism and the free market. And they look at Hillary, even though they should look at Donald Trump and see the same thing, but they look at Hillary and they see corporate capitalism and they see that she's fucking greedy. She's a money grubber. She's a fucking liar. Like they see all those things. And she's also a woman. And they see all those things when they look at her. They should see those things when they look at Donald Trump too. But Donald Trump really like pulled the wool over these people's eyes and convinced them, you know, like, oh, like I'm going to make America great again. Like I'm for the fucking people, poor people, you know, you poor white people, overdosing on heroin and fucking Appalachia and shit like that. Like, I'm here for you. Like, you don't like fucking niggers? I don't like niggers either, you know? Like, he appealed to that, to those poor people that felt, those poor white people that are also overwhelmingly racist, that are blaming the Mexicans, that are blaming the niggers, you know, that are blaming all of us instead of looking at capitalism and the free market, which Donald Trump is a huge part of, all his shit is fucking made in China, not in American factories. Like, his shit is all made in fucking China. I remember there was, like, a story about that, about how, like, all his shit is, like, made in factories overseas. It's not like he even, like, has American factories. that like, he's, like, providing American jobs for people. But instead of, like, looking at, like, the one percenters, really, which Donald Trump is a part of, and, you know, the economy and capitalism and free market, you know, they blame all these, like, like I said, they blame, like, the black people and, like, the Mexicans and, like, the Muslims and, you know, like, and they're just, like, really wallowing in, like, holding on to to the, these ideas and Donald Trump just, like, blew all that shit up. And, that, like I said, that's, like, the, the big three, like, really playing out in this presidential cycle. And white people just overwhelmingly voted for him because they're fucking racist. Like, I'm, like, I'm going to read you guys some numbers. Like, he even won the vote among white among whites aged 18 to 29. So, like, even, like, people love to act like, oh, we just have to, like, wait for all the old white people to die. Like, no, 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 no. Your young white friends that listen to trap music and you let fucking say the N-word because Billy is so cool, he probably went and voted for Trump, too, because he's racist. He don't like you. He thinks you're a nigger. I'm going to read you guys some stuff. Um... Like, Trump basically won all of all of the South and Middle America. And Hillary won the East and the West. You know? And that's not surprising. I'm not surprised. People are, like, so surprised and, like, whatever. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Because I feel like I understand white people, and I understand their true nature, and I understand how they, this is just how they are. This is just how they are. Um, really, like, they're racist, like, number one, number one, this is just how white people are, white people are racist, and Donald Trump appealed to that, and they went out and voted for that, and there's just really no getting around, like, that specifically, that's number one, but number two, like I said before, our, our fucking political, whatever this two-party fucking bipartisan bullshit is, is a fucking joke. It's a circus. It's not real, and it's ran by the media. And these debates were held in Las Vegas. Like, it's a fucking prize fight. Like, it's fucking Evander Holyfield. Like, and, like, the media, like, pumps like pumps this shit and, like, pumps it and pumps it and pumps it because they want you to watch because they want ratings. Like, it's the fucking Super Bowl or, like, the NBA Finals. Like, the shit is a circus. Like, politics itself is a circus that is, like, completely disconnected from the average person. And, like, that, like, played into, like, Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump's like, hey, I'm not a politician. I'm not a part of this political system. I'm a regular person. And he, like, appealed to that. He, like, appealed to that in people. And he appealed to that in people that were not white also. Like, he appealed to that in, like, working class, like, blacks and Latinos as well. Because like, we've all heard blacks and Latinos say they're going to, like, vote for Trump because of, like, whatever. Like, oh, like... He's like, he's like going to make things better for like the working class person. He's not like a politician. He's not like a corporate politician like Hillary, like a fucking shark. Like, you know, he appealed to that in people because there's a disconnect between politicians and the average American. And I feel that myself. I'm just not like Trump is just like, no. But like, I feel that myself, like I'm not even invested in politics or in this political system because it's all fucking bullshit. And the Democratic Party really underestimated that. I think they should have nominated Bernie. I think Bernie, Bernie would have beat Donald Trump. But they didn't think that Bernie would beat Donald Trump because of the media and the part that the media played in, like, really fucking with Bernie, making it seem like he's just an old man that doesn't have a chance. So they decided to go with Hillary, who's a fucking racist, greedy, shark, corporate capitalist. You know, she's like a slimy politician. 
Hillary is a slimy politician. And people didn't want to go for a slimy politician that's also a fucking racist that thought of the term super predator and ushered in the era of mass incarceration. And for the people that didn't care that she's a slimy politician, and then for the people that didn't care that she's a fucking racist, you had the people that would never vote for her because she's a woman. Like, choosing her was a bad choice. A bad choice. Tweets. Um, some tweets that I wanted to read you. Um... I said, y'all out here talking about third-party voters and non-party voters and shit. I mean, and non-voters and shit. Nah, there's always been third-party voters, non-voters, etc. The blame is always to rest at the feet of white people and white supremacy. Uh, you know, white supremacy and then the patriarchy, people that just didn't want a woman, and then the people that were reacting to capitalism and the free market and this idea of politics as corporate capitalism. You know, the people that were recoiling away from that idea. So they went to who they saw as, you know, the working class candidate, which was Donald Trump. The big three, the big three of fucking evil, white supremacy slash racism, sexism slash the patriarchy, capitalism, classism, the free market. Evil, evil. White voters rather emphatically and enthusiastically made a choice last night. Here it is. Let's not run from it now. You know? We've talked about everything but race tonight. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president, and that's where the pain comes. That's from Van Jones. I'm going to have tons of links in the description box, links to tweets and articles and stuff, so make sure you um, check those out. White people really hate us. It's never been more clear. Someone like posted my video, yes, all white people like y'all really learned this one today. Like. It's really never been more clear. I agree. Like, it's really never been more clear. They show, they show their true faces. But they've been showing their true faces. They've been showing their true faces. They showed their true faces when George Zimmerman walked. They showed, the, they showed their true faces when it was ruled a homicide. Freddie Gray's death was ruled a homicide, yet it's nobody's fault. They continue to show you their true faces. And y'all continue to sit in my fucking comment section arguing semantics, talking about not all. You can't say all. All. All of them. All of them. A very small fucking portion are what I like to call recovering racists, which means they were racist at one point because, yes, all white people. And even that percentage is so small that they don't even matter, that they didn't even matter in this election. I wanted to read you guys some stuff. Uh, Michael Moore. Michael Moore is a documentary, a documentary maker, a filmmaker. Michael Moore's tough words for liberals, you weren't paying attention to your fellow Americans. Uh, essentially, Moore thinks that many on the left are out of touch with their fellow Americans, particularly, particularly the Americans who live in rural areas who came out in droves to support Trump. You know, you were in a bubble, you weren't paying attention to your fellow Americans and their despair. Years of being neglected by both parties, the anger and the need for revenge against the system only grew. And along came a TV star they liked and whose plan was to destroy both parties. Like I said, his shit said American Independent. It said Republican, comma, American Independent. That they liked whose plan was to destroy both parties and tell them all you're fired. Moore also slams liberals who didn't take Trump's candidacy seriously from the start and said they should have immediately recognized the threat he posed. He was never a joke. Treating him as one only strengthened him. He is both a create a creature and a creation of the media, and the media will never own that. Again, you have this like this idea of this like two party system, this bipartisan system, which tells you like like Democrat Republican, Democrat Republican, and any and any third. First of all, any third party or even any third party candidate that tries to come in, be it Bernie, who's a democratic socialist, or Jill Stein with the Green Party, they get kind of like squashed by the media as like, oh, they're not important, whatever. And that plays a huge part as well. This is how forceful racism is. This is how much they hate us. This was about putting us in our place, which I completely agree with that. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Um, let's talk about... There's a couple more things. 
white women, white women voted over, this is Kim YouTube, white women voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. She said, dear white women, cut the bullshit. Literally two out of three of you voted for Donald Trump. Go work on yourselves. You are the problem. All white voters overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump, you know, of all ages, they overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump. So you have a lot of white women that are today saying like, oh, people just didn't want a woman president. Like, like, oh, you know, a black president followed by like a female president would have been like too much to white male authority. Like they're not owning up to the fact that like two out of three white women also voted for Donald Trump because their white privilege, you know, their, their seat at the white table mattered more to them than like possibly electing the first woman president in history because... You know, the way that it intersections, white women, white feminists, which we've talked about a bunch of times on this channel, have historically been racist, and they're going to continue to historically be racist, and they're going to continue to choose their, their race over gender, which is why I say that I choose my race over gender. I will, I will go to bat for a black person, a black man, before a white woman any day of the week, because I'm black first, because I know when the chips are down, she's going to be motherfucking white first. She's going to be white first. And again, this election played out on a national stage and proved that shit. Um, why did Clinton lose white people, including most white women? You know, they voted overwhelmingly. Race and gender. I wanted to show you guys this. Race and gender. Like, Hillary won the popular vote. More people, like more of us, black men, black women, Latino men, Latino women, others, more of us, like people of color, we voted blue, but white people voted white, <laughs> voted white, they voted red, <laughs> voted white, really, in this sense. 63%, 63% of white men voted Trump. 52% of white women voted Trump. More than half. That's a lot. 80% of black men voted Hillary. 93% of black women voted Hillary. 62% of Latino men voted Hillary. 68% of Latino women voted, voted Hillary. And the way that this is broken down, like, it's crazy. You know? When you look at the map, this is among the millennials of color. All that blue, millennials of color, right? White women voted red. Come on. White people don't like you. White people don't like you. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. White people voted for Trump. All those white liberals. All the, those white kids you know, all the older white people you know, they voted for Trump. What else can I tell you? We saw the big three play out on a national stage. Our entire political system needs to be fucking dismantled and overhauled. Racism and white supremacy needs to be dismantled and overhauled. Sexism and the patriarchy needs to be dismantled and overhauled. Capitalism, corporate capitalism, classism, the free market needs to be dismantled and overhauled because you just saw the, the fruits of that labor play out on a national stage. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Before I go, I also want to talk a little bit about the popular vote versus the electoral college. Um, cause I know a lot of people don't understand how that works. Cause I said that Hillary won the popular vote, which means that Hillary got more votes overall. She got more votes than Donald Trump. However, the way that the electoral college works is you, you basically, you have to get 270 electoral college votes to win the election. And basically what that means is that you have places, you have states that are really, really big, for example, like California or you have places that are really, really densely populated, like New York, for example. And a lot of the times, those places tend to go really liberal. 
So let's say you have somewhere like California that's just like huge and it has such a huge population, or you have somewhere again like New York that's huge and has a huge population, and both of those states tend to go liberal, they tend to go democratic. So the Electoral College was put in place so that you have places like across middle America, like in Wisconsin, you know, like in Iowa, like in Pennsylvania, places that are less densely populated than say a New York or a state that is just not as large as a California, they give them electoral votes so that, you know, it's not, it's a, the, the point is supposed to be like, oh, well, it's unfair that if you win California and New York, that means you automatically like win just because California, I'm using California and New York just as examples. You know, oh, it's unfair that if you win California or New York, you automatically win just because California and New York have like so many people. Like, you know, like, like California, like the population of California is like the population of like five or six other states like combined, you know, like the population of like New York City alone is like the same population as like there's like three or four like Midwest states that have that are really sparsely populated, you know, like rural areas combined. So the Electoral College is supposed to kind of combat that by saying, you know, oh, just because it's basically saying like, oh, just because so many people voted for you doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win because that means if you like swing like a lot one large state or one densely populated state that means you win. But a lot of people feel like this is this is created an unfair advantage among white Americans that live in middle America because they have more electoral college votes. And even if you win the popular vote, you can still lose the election if you don't have enough electoral college votes, which is what we just saw with Hillary Clinton. And I saw someone say on Twitter, they basically summed it up as saying like the way that it's set up now with the popular vote versus the electoral college, it elevates the votes of these like white rural voters, you know, and these people that Donald Trump really, really, really appealed to, it elevates their votes so their vote counts more. So it's not about the amount of votes you get, it's about getting the right kind of votes, right? And that kind of undermines the whole like democratic process. So there was a really good article about the Electoral College that I wanted to read you guys some stuff from on Billboard. Billboard.com um, you might be hearing a lot of talk about how, well, let's say, presidential elections are decided by capturing the majority of the United States' 538 electoral votes. At publication time, Trump led Clinton 279 to 218, thus topping the 270 needed for a majority. But what does it all mean? You might be hearing a lot of talk about how Clinton actually won the popular vote. At publication time, she indeed led Trump uh, by about 170,000 votes, and it's more now. She definitely won the popular vote. As Clinton-friendly West Coast votes continue to be counted, that margin figures to increase. So if more people voted for Clinton, why did Trump win the election? This is where the United States Electoral College comes in. It's been in place since the Constitution was first drawn up. I'm going to time out and say a lot of the things from our, you know, from capitalism and the free market to the way that our politics work have been in place since the Constitution was drawn up, and they do not work in 2016. 2016 with the internet and with the, the demographic and the population changes and the ending of slavery and we have all these things that are antebellum that are still in place that we worship like as if they're fucking gods and deities and they do not work for America the way that it is in 2016 at all. It's been in place since the Constitution was first drawn up, and ideally, it's supposed to protect against a lot of perceived problems that would come from a straight up popular vote. Each state is given a share of the United States 538 electoral votes based off its population with totals ranging from California's 55 to a number of states with only three. This might seem like a wide margin, but in the big picture, it supposedly levels the playing field for sparsely populated states like Wyoming and North Dakota, which could see even less national attention if their less than a million populations were siphoned into the United States 300 million plus electorate. Um, you know, by giving a unique say to each state, the Electoral College is supposed to foster individual interests that would be swallowed up in a winner-take-all affair. So with Hillary and, Clump, and, and Trump, Hillary won more votes overall, but a multitude of them came from the same few states, like California and New York. Regardless of how decisively you win them, you can only win them one time, and there's a set amount of electoral votes you can earn. Trump's grand total of votes was spread more evenly throughout the country, and he won many more states. Right? So just because you won California, which has more electoral votes in that one state, if you win, you know, 
10 states in middle America, which is basically essentially what Trump did, you're going to win. You're going to win. Uh, and they talk a little bit about third parties. What about third parties? Despite some comparatively strong showings, they haven't won a single electoral vote in a presidential election since 1968. And one criticism of the Electoral College is that it's too tough on third party challengers to the Republicans and Democrats. So far this year, the entire field, including the Green Party's Jill Stein and the Libertarian's Gary Johnson, have combined for about 6 million votes over all 50 states. 6 million people voted third party. That's a lot. You might hear some complaining about how they spoiled the race for Clinton. This is possible in some states, though extremely difficult to assess nationally, since it forces guesswork on which mainstream candidate these voters would otherwise support. So it's like we have mainstream voting and then we have third party voting. Because like mainstream voting is not working for people, so they vote third party. But like with the way that the electoral college is set up versus the popular vote, like it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not working in so many different ways. Our political system doesn't work on multiple levels. It doesn't work because it's being wrangled by the media and the media controls everything. It doesn't work as a bipartisan system, period, because two parties do not, they just can't represent all people. And like the diversity of our country is just not being represented by two parties that for the most part, you know, pander to the fucking elite you know, the one percenters, both parties, both parties. So like our bipartisan political system doesn't work on those two levels alone. Like it panders to the elite, it panders to corporate capitalism, it panders to the media, it panders to the 1%. And your average American feels a disconnect from that. And they don't even give a fuck about voting. They don't even want, most Americans don't even vote and they haven't voted for fucking decades. They came out and voted for Donald Trump because he ran as like the anti-political fucking candidate because people hate our political system. I hate our political system. Our political system is trash, but I just don't hate it enough to vote for a fucking racist fascist demagogue because I'm not a white racist. But there are a lot of white racists out of it out there and they just revealed themselves to you like this shit has just revealed a lot about America that people didn't want to see didn't want to believe so yeah I'm not surprised I'm really not people ask me all the time like how do I deal with like doing YouTube and like YouTube comments and like people calling me nigger and this, that, and the third. And I always say like, that's just the way white people are. That's their nature. They elected Donald Trump. That's how they are. I hope y'all wake up to that. Stop fucking with them. Um, so that's my video on that. There will be lots of links in the description box. I'm sure y'all going to get into it in the comment section. So I'll see y'all next time. Food for thought as always. Peace.